Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because, because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. We will read it responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He may be down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. You revive my soul and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Lord, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth 
and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. I invite all children to take part in the gospel procession. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. some truly fantastic things about being human. Seeing the world green up again with the spring, seeing the Cubs win a game at Wrigley, and one of my favorite things happened just recently when my nephew was visiting, and I showed him how to play the organ here, and he played the Moonlight Sonata on it, immediately followed by Thunderstruck by (laughs) ACDC. 
All of these are some of the best perks of being human. But there are some things about being human that are not so fantastic. There are things that are more painful. And brokenness is one of these things. Some of you will recognize this quote from a classic movie. Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who tells you differently is selling something. And it's true. The human experience is filled with brokenness. Sometimes just hairline fractures that heal with time, and sometimes things that shatter every part of your existence. Now, experiencing brokenness is not a judgment of good or evil. It simply is. Brokenness happens to people who deserve it and people who don't. Sometimes we choose brokenness, and sometimes it happens to us completely out of our control. But either way, to be broken is to be human. This season, we've been talking about piecing it back together. And I can think of no better example than a Japanese art form um, that I've always found really beautiful, and it's called kintsugi. You can see a picture of it on the cover of your bulletins. It's when broken pottery is repaired, but rather than trying to hide the cracks to make it appear seamless again, instead the cracks are filled with a lacquer that is mixed with precious metal like gold or silver. So the result is a restored piece that is even more beautiful because its brokenness is highlighted and not hidden away. So then in its golden scars, you learn and you appreciate the history of its use. Often, the brokenness that we experience in our lives leaves a scar too. And just like physical scars, these emotional or spiritual scars can be tiny and invisible, or they can be huge and red and painful. And it's, it's a very human impulse to want to conceal these scars from each other, and even from ourselves, to pretend that we were never broken in the first place. We see it as a weakness or a failure, and it makes us less worthy or less valuable or less useful. I want you to just take a moment and look within yourself to identify one of those places that you have been broken. Is it something that you chose, like leaving a relationship? Or is it something that happened beyond your control, like abuse? Maybe your broken part is named loneliness. Maybe it's that your body is betraying you through age or illness. Maybe you're emotionally spent from taking care of everybody except for yourself. Maybe you're struggling to find faith that you've lost, or maybe you're just struggling to figure out who you are. It's another human impulse to isolate ourselves, to say nobody else could possibly know how I'm feeling right now. But I suspect that if we all named our brokenness out loud, if we compared our scars, that we would be surprised how many of us share the same ones. I don't mind sharing with you two major instances in my life where I have experienced extreme brokenness because I know that many of you share similar experiences. But I also want to share about how eventually the lessons of Kintsugi taught me to not just tolerate, but celebrate the places where my life broke apart. The first major brokenness I experienced was the breaking of my faith. I think a good number of you probably know that I was Mormon for the first 22 years of my life. And I lived in an area that was 90% Mormon. At the time, my entire family was Mormon. And so it would have been a lot easier for me to just maintain the status quo and pretend that I was still a believer. But I intentionally chose brokenness when I intentionally walked down that path. Now, exactly why I chose to leave the church is a long story for another time. But I will say that it was a traumatic process that was a lot of painful soul searching, and it took years and years. 
and it involved me losing most of my friends and a good chunk of my personal identity. And when that process had run its course and I fully walked away from the Mormon church, I was absolutely sure that I was walking away from God and religion altogether. We see how well this has worked out for me. <laughs> but as I gained some distance and some perspective from that trauma, I began to look for ways to celebrate the fact that I was healing from damage that I had thought was completely beyond repair. And one of the ways I did that was through my appearance. So the Mormon church is very clear about things that are and are not acceptable about the way you look. Among other things, there are no tattoos and there are no unnatural hair colors. <laughs> now, not all members observe those rules, but it does feel like there's kind of an unwritten understanding that those who do observe those rules are the most devout. And I had seen faith leaders exclude people from the most sacred of spaces just because they had extreme hair colors. And so while I had always secretly wanted to have a fun color of hair, it was not worth being ostracized. So when I finally was brave enough to dye my hair for the first time, I looked in the mirror and it was like, oh, that's who you are. <laughs> now it took me even longer to be brave enough to get a tattoo. Uh, in the Mormon church, it is said that tattoos defile the temple of your body. And I know there are certainly non-Mormon folks who feel the same way, and that is perfectly fine. Um, but it was very explicitly forbidden in that faith. So when I got my first tattoo, it was this empowering act of defiance. I wasn't, I wasn't defiling my temple, I was decorating it. And I was doing it in a way that to me was sacred because I chose tattoos that were deeply significant to me. And so I was reclaiming my body. I love myself. you. Now, the tattoos and the silly hair, these have become celebrations of my own history. Yeah. These are Oh, the Sydney says that she loves you. She is playing with Wally as soon as you... I was once broken apart. They are visible reminders to me that even though my whole identity was once hey, stop broken, putting it on mute. I am whole again and Sweet. I am more myself not in spite of what I went through, but because of what I went through. But not all brokenness is something you willingly choose. Sometimes it happens to you. The second instance where I encountered extreme brokenness in my life was when in 2018, my husband received a terminal diagnosis when the doctors said the words stage four colon cancer to us. It was like a switch had been flipped. The damage was done. I would never be happy. I would never be whole again. And I accepted that. And even though he and I found ways to make the years that he had left beautiful and joyful in their own way, that innocent happiness would never return. And when he died at the age of 38 in 2021, one of the most surreal parts of the grieving process was that I still looked like a normal person on the outside, but the inside, I was a train wreck. <laughs> I, felt, I felt like Pigpen in Charlie Brown, <laughs> but instead of this perpetual cloud of dust following me around, I felt like there was this black cloud of grief and it was shocking to me that nobody else could see it because it was so real to me. But eventually, through the love and support of my family, and through all of you, and through a lot of therapy, <laughs> I can honestly say that I have actually found my way back to happiness. And it's not that innocent happiness that I had before but that doesn't make it any less real. I found meaning and purpose in what I went through by being able to be a listening ear to those of you who are caregivers or who are grieving your own losses. 
I keep Chris alive in my heart by leaning into joy because now I know that any day could be the last. So I'd better make it a good one. My experience has become a beautiful scar that I'm happy to display so that others who are struggling know that healing is possible too. Now, there are many examples of brokenness throughout the Bible, and none is more powerful than Jesus choosing his own brokenness when he died on the cross. In our gospel reading that we just heard this week, Jesus says, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. Jesus shared his radical message of God's love, knowing full well that he was choosing the consequences of publicly speaking that kind of truth under Roman rule. And if you remember our gospel reading last week, Jesus proudly bore the scars of his choice in his hands and his feet and freely showed them to the disciples. He said, look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. He wasn't trying to hide his scars. He was using them to identify himself to his friends. And in today's epistle reading, John tells us how to apply the lessons of Kintsugi in our own lives and in the lives of our friends and our neighbors. He says to us, little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. My friends, this is, to me, what church is supposed to be. This is God's love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. We don't need to pretend that we've never been broken in the first place, because when we hide our scars, we are telling people around us that their brokenness is something that they should be ashamed of too. Jesus didn't hide his scars and we don't need to either. Like that broken pottery repaired with gold, our scars are beautiful. They make us unique, they make us who we are and they celebrate our history. We are all broken vessels and we come to these pews or we come to this Zoom meeting to acknowledge that and to sit together in this brokenness, to fight against our human inclination to hide our scars, to make our brokenness both visible and beautiful, whether we chose it or it happened to us, to celebrate it loudly and proudly and say, I have been broken, I know you have been too, let's hang out together. This is, this is why, in the Holy Week that we just experienced, why we don't go from waving triumphant palms at Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and jump straight into, Alleluia, Christ is risen. We need to live in that brokenness of the last week of Jesus' life. We need to sit alone in Gethsemane and see Judas' betrayal. We need to make the walk to Golgotha. We need to sit with Mary at the feet of her dying child. We need to sit in silent anticipation of what we hope is to come, but is not here yet. The stories of our faith are filled with examples of brokenness. And we read them over and over to get comfortable sitting in that brokenness. To practice identifying it and accepting it in ourselves too. We piece ourselves back together with gold, and we live out God's love in ourselves and in the world, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. When we celebrate our scars, that is when we are making ourselves and our communities a safe and a joyful place for others to do the same. And isn't that the very definition of what it is to radiate God's grace, equipping all people to change the world. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and true him truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and for the life of the world to come. Amen. O oh God, on the first day of the week, you began your labor to create this beautiful world. Enliven us to carry on your creative acts, piecing together what is fractured, and bringing blessing to all people and creatures. We invite those online to type your prayers of joy and gratitude into the chat, and they will be read aloud. The on-site congregation gives thanks today for sunny days and safe travels. Liam's 11th birthday, honeybee season starting, flowers in bloom, family, friends, and neighbors, and pets with unconditional love. The online congregation gives thanks today for? For sunny skies and greenery, for beautiful spring flowers and medical professionals. We offer uh, we give silent thanks in our hearts. <laughs> Alleluia. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayers. Alleluia. O God, you are not a stranger to suffering, but have borne our pain in Jesus Christ. Enliven us to bear the agonies of one another, piecing us back together through compassion and service. We invite those online to type your prayers of intercession into the chat, and they will be read aloud. Today, we pray for those on our parish prayer list, including Tom, Jeff Kistler, Christy McKay, John Colfers, Ron Falb, Gina Sapanara. The on-site congregation offers prayers today for Anne, Tony or Tori, Maureen, Jenny, Michelle, Carolyn, Lori, the Watts family, Earl, and CSR. The online congregation offers prayers today for? For Jake, for Jerry, for Alex and Ashley, for the victims of warfare and gun violence globally, for Susan, for Barbara, Carol, Ed and Zach, Bill, the Hunter family, Cassidy, Addison, Janesse and John Duback, for PJ, for the people of Ukraine and the people of Israel. We offer silent intercessions in our hearts.
Alleluia. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayers. Alleluia. O God, not even death can separate us apart from your love. Enliven us to act with boldness for the sake of your good news, confident in the hope of resurrection and the restoration of all creation from brokenness to wholeness. We invite those online to type your prayers for the dead into the chat, and they will be read aloud. We pray especially for those on our parish prayer list, including Beverly Taylor. The on-site congregation offers prayers today for Mark, Roger, Tom, Patricia, James Watts. The online congregation offers prayers today for for Twyla Zittle and the Reverend Tom Behrens, for John, Skip, and David, for Jack, and for Chris. We hold our beloved dead silently in our hearts. Alleluia. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayers. Alleluia. O God, who creates all things for your own delight, who redeems your people from slavery and injustice, who sustains us constantly with wisdom and courage, raise us to new life this day and every day, that we may radiate with your grace and transform the world in your name. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, all. Peace. Have a wonderful Peace, Sunday. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Peace, Susan. Peace, Dad. Peace, everybody. Catherine sure has a way to present things, doesn't she? Yes, that was wonderful. I invite forward those who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or who are traveling this week. Happy birthday, friends. May God your, whoop, get more. May God your creator who wonderfully and beautifully made you continue to pour out the blessings of this life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Celebrate well. We have Sarah Snyder traveling online. Sarah Snyder as well, and friends gathered here. <laughs> <laughs> Correlation, birthday, travel. Hmm. Double dipping. <laughs> I'm waiting for the triple dip. At some point, it's going to be all three. Friends, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be at your back and the skies be clear. Wherever you go in this big, beautiful world that God has made, continue to carry the love of this community and the light of Christ with you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Safe travels. And let us all always walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us. Wait a minute before we do that. Just a quick reminder. Once again, though we're trying this communion experiment during the Easter season, um, where uh, we are offering both the tray and the cup. Please, uh, as you line up, folks on this side, line up along the altar rail this side, folks on this side, line up along the altar, altar rail going this way. Uh, you will receive bread as the uh, wine comes by. Simply indicate whether you want the uh, big cup or if you want the little cups on the tray and juices in the little cups. All right. Let us now walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Yet chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing.
glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw the whole world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are invited to the feast prepared from the foundation of the world.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and fed us with salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one for all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. Please be seated for some updates on our work. Good morning. My name is Rafael Orsi, and I'm a member of the Vestry of the Vestry leadership here at St. Gregory's. If this is your first Sunday with us, welcome, and thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we'd love to get to know you better. I invite you to fill one of those greeting cards, and either place it in the basket or hand it back to me. <clears throat> I'll be standing in the back of church after service, and we'd love to meet you. Good morning. I'm Dan Pohala. I'm priest in charge here at St. Gregory's. I add my welcome to Raphael's. Um, so uh, she sings, she choir directs, she does grief <laughs> counseling, and now she preaches. Let's give it a yeah. Can I let you in on a secret? I've been working on her since I got here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine, for a beautiful message and for the vulnerability and just everything you do. Thank you so much. Um, and it doesn't end there. Uh, we are still doing our Preacher Doc Talk Back series after church, so come join us in the Parker Parlor down the hall on the left, um, and we will continue the discussion with Catherine uh, about, what, about her sermon today. Um, along the theme of piecing it back together, the work of resurrection. We are also, uh, today, um, we have uh, coffee and tea available in Founders Hall, so you can stop in there, grab a coffee or tea on your way to the Parker Parlor, um, or you can hang out um, just with your coffee and friends in Founders Hall. Uh, a few other announcements for you. Uh, first, tomorrow, 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 tomorrow is the deadline for those who are interested in applying for the Rector Discernment Committee. Um, application, paper applications for that are in by the Science Center at the parking lot entrance. Um, there is also a form online, but remember, tomorrow is the deadline. Uh, the vestry will be uh, deciding uh, on that committee at their meeting tomorrow evening. That's why the deadline, so we can get that process going. Thank you everyone so far who has donated uh, abundantly to our housewarming drive for migrants. A uh, reminder again, all through Easter season, we are collecting both household consumables and small appliances. Details about that are on the back page of your bulletin. Um, also next Sunday is uh, community meals. So if you uh, are available to help serve uh, food to our hungry neighbors up in Waukegan, please sign up to do so today. There is a clipboard at the sign up center. Uh, last night was the last confirmation class for this class of confirmand. So please uh, be part of celebrating with them on May 4th, which is the confirmation service at Trinity Highland Park, uh, along with our Better Together partners. All right, let's stand for the final blessing. Friends, live with courage. Your creator has made you holy, has always walked with you, and loves you back to life. Go in boldness to proclaim the resurrection and the love, mercy, and blessing of God go before you always.
forth into the world healing through the power of Jesus Christ. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.